Hey y'all. So, um, I'm just, it's like a righteous anger. Have you ever had the feeling of a righteous anger just well up inside you at the stuff that you see going on in the world, at the stuff that you see your fellow brothers and sisters defending? I am so tired of it that I just, I just had to vent. And I'm sorry, but I thank you all for tuning in. I thank you all for watching. Um, I thank you all for even liking and subscribing and even commenting. Uh, this is actually in conjunction with the Revolt Podcast and Freedom in Christ Ministries. Uh, go ahead and check that page out too. Uh, that is my husband's page of podcasts. But um, anyway, I can't take y'all. I can't take it anymore. I am so frustrated with people using scripture to defend their sin rather than using scripture to go against it. Why are you using the scripture to defend your sin instead of defending the scripture against the sin? Y'all are using your, the scriptures to defend your lifestyles and to say that it's okay. I'm so tired of it. I saw this one today talking about um, if being gay is a sin, then do you still watch porn? Do you mix fabrics? Do you do this and do you do that? Maybe you should check your Bible. No, maybe you should check your Bibles. Because according to the Bible, homosexuality is an abomination, not just a sin, an abomination. And if you're going to use the Bible to defend your sin, how can you even consider yourself a child of God? You're using the Bible as a crutch for your lifestyle. And the Bible says that we are not supposed to be like the world. The Bible says we are supposed to be set apart, sanctified to him, away from stuff of the world. The Bible says we are not even supposed to eat with people who defend their sin and use the Bible to defend their sin. I was just reading 1 Corinthians chapters 5 and 6 talk clearly about it. How you are not supposed to eat with such people who act in this manner. And I'm talking about brothers and sisters here. I'm not talking about people of the world. The Lord is not talking about people of the world. Because it says right here. It says it right here. I wrote you in my letter not to associate with immoral people. And then it goes on to say, I did not at all mean with the immoral people of this world or with the covetous and swindlers or with idolaters, for then you would have to go out of the world. He goes on to say, actually, I wrote to you not to associate with any so-called brother or sister. If he is an immoral person or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or a swindler, not to even eat with such a one. And if you go on to Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21, there's 15 plus, 15 plus immoralities that Paul talks to the Galatians about, about how those people will not inherit the kingdom of God. And he's talking about believers. He's talking about brothers and sisters. He's talking about people who claim to follow Christ. But they don't live like it. They live like the world. They listen to the world's music. Y'all listen to the world's music. Y'all watch these movies. Like Harry Potter. Oh my good Lord God Almighty. Do you even know what Harry Potter is about? Witchcraft. Which is rebellion. Do you know the spells that they do in that movie are actual spells? Did you know that? Did you know that the creator of that is a witch? Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. We need to be vigilant in what we watch. We need to be vigilant in what we listen to and stop being like the world. Because the Bible says that if you are friends with the world, you are an enemy of him. An enemy. And for any of you who actually know anything about the Bible, what God does to his enemies, he destroys them. He destroys them. You are not even to associate with people who talk like this and who defend it judge not lest ye be judged one of the most misquoted scriptures in the bible because it goes on to say for you will be judged by the measure in which you judge but if you judge righteously as the bible says and if you judge according to the word of god which is what you will be judged too then you're judging righteously it says judge not lest ye be judged because in the measure in which you judge you will be judged Okay, so if I'm going to be judged by the word of God, then I will judge by the word of God. And the Bible also goes on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 about this, 
It says, for what I have to do with judging outsiders. Do you not judge those who are within the church? But those who are outside, God judges. Remove the wicked man from among yourselves, which means purge the evil from among you. That's another version. Purge the evil from among you. So if there's somebody in your church who lives lives like this and nobody says anything to them, that's called leaven. That's called leaven because it goes on to say, do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? So if a little bit of this is allowed in the church, then everybody in the church is going to see that it's okay. And they can do it too. Because if nobody's bringing about their sin, as the elders are called to do, then they think it's okay to do. All these people living together before they get married, having children together before they get married. These are brothers and sisters. Why are they not being counseled? Why? Why leaders of the church? Why elders? Why deacons? Why are you not counseling these people? Why are you not calling these people out? Oh, let, let those who not sin cast the first stone. That's another one that people just pick out and put away on this side. You know, I, I did a post on Facebook today because I was so frustrated with this. As y'all cherry pick. Y'all treat the Bible like a buffet. Go to Golden Crown be like, oh, I think I like this one because it says I'm saved by grace. Oh, I like this one too because it says judge not. But I'm going to leave that one in there that talks about go and sin no more. I'm going to leave this one in here. I'm not, I'm not having, I'm not having a taste for the judge righteously. Oh, and look at this dessert that, oh, put, get the speck out of, get the log out of your own eye before you try to get the speck out of your brother's eye. I'm going to take a whole bunch of this and just mow it down. But y'all leave the stuff you don't like. Y'all leave Galatians 5, 19 through 21 out about how it talks about the 15 immoralities of the church and the people that will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Paul's talking to the believers here, friends. He ain't talking to the world. Because the world isn't going to read this book. That's what we are called to do. We are called to go out and preach the gospel. We are called to go out and teach the word. Not sit in our comfortable churches every week and talk about the same stuff to believers. We're called to go out into the world and talk about this book. We're called to go out into the world and call out those things which are not biblical and bring people in, set people free. That's what we're to do. We're to go and take from the enemy and put back into God's hands. We're called to gain territory from the enemy. What do you think they did? They went and they gained a little bit of territory here, went and gained a little bit of territory there, and then they gained the whole country. That's what we are to do. We're not supposed to sit in church and to use the Bible to defend our lifestyle of getting drunk. Oh, well, the Bible said, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. Oh, that's like a total face palm right there. It was on fermented wine. Hello, do your research. Yes, the Bible says that the Bible doesn't say you can't drink. The Bible says you are not to partake in drunkenness and wild parties. Even Paul told Timothy to have a glass of wine because it helps with his stomach. But the Bible says to you are to be of sober mind. Sober, which means not clouded, which means not drunk with wine. And the Bible even taught, Isaiah even talks about people who make strong drink and how you're not supposed to do that. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah, I forgot that's Old Testament. Oh, really? So then I guess you can't read Psalms anymore because it's Old Testament. You bet you can't go with Proverbs anymore because it's Old Testament. It's Old Covenant. My husband is about to do a podcast on the New Covenant. Stay tuned for that one. But I am just so tired of y'all defending your sin and using the Bible to defend it instead of the Bible defending the Bible. The Bible says go and sin no more. Jesus says go and sin no more. Are you not a new creation like I said in my last one? If you're a new creation, you won't want to do those things anymore. You don't want it. I'm a new creation. I don't want to do those things anymore. I'm going to give you a little bit of my testimony right now. I don't want to smoke meth anymore. I don't want to watch porn anymore. I don't want to get drunk anymore. I don't want to do those things because I have Christ and the Holy Spirit living in me telling me that I cannot do those things because it is against the word of God. I have to be of sober mind. Yes, I smoke meth. Yes, one of these days I'm going to give my testimony about it and I'm going to show you pictures of what 
going against the Bible does. From 2009, I got saved in jail in 2009. I got out of jail in 2009. Do you want to know what I did? For three, four years, I continued to live like the world, claiming grace through faith. I'm saved by grace. I'm forgiven. I could just ask for forgiveness later. I could do what I want and ask for forgiveness later. That is not repentance. That is saying you're sorry and continuing to live in the lifestyle, using the Bible to defend your lifestyle. But then in 2012, guess what happened? God smacked me down. Totally smacked me down. Knocked me on my face. Took everything back from me that I have gained back. Took everything away from me. My kids. Everything. You want to know why? Because it was for his glory. And it was for him to use me to show that I cannot use the Bible as a crutch and neither can you to defend your sin and to defend your lifestyle. I'm tired of seeing my brothers and sisters defending their lifestyles using a Bible as a crutch. No, you are not supposed to live like this. Look, you know what? Let's go to Galatians right now. Galatians chapter 5. Let's go to that right now and talk about the 15 immoralities. Okay, for the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, Envying, drunkenness, caressing, and things like these of which I forewarned you, just as I forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. He's talking about believers here, people. And he even talked about it to the, uh, to the Corinthians. Let's go back to Corinthians chapter 5. Excuse me, chapter 6. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators or idolaters or nor adulterers or effeminate nor homosexuals nor thieves nor the covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> He's talking about believers, people who claim to follow Christ, who claim that they are saved by grace through faith. If you're saved by grace through faith, you won't want to do those things anymore. You will have nothing to do with those things. You don't even want to do them. The world will be a stench to you. The Bible says that too. For the world is a stench to those who are being saved. And to those who are being saved, it will be a stench. Let me go back again. Let me see. Oh, it's in, it's in Corinthians. How appropriate. It's in Corinthians about how the world is a stench to those who are being saved. And we are a stench to the world. Do you know, one time I was walking through a store and I believe it was a witch that walked, walked behind me and I smelled her. I smelled the odor coming from her. That is what the world smells like. It is an abominational stench to you that you can't even smell it. You have to go somewhere else because you can't smell it. You can't stand the smell of it. It stinks. Yet there are so many brothers and sisters that stink like the world. I'm so tired of seeing y'all use the Bible to defend your lifestyles. Because if you are truly saved, you are truly in Christ, and you truly are followed by the Spirit, and are being led by the Spirit, you won't want to do those things anymore. You will have nothing to do with them anymore. Nothing. You won't want to do those things. You won't want to go get drunk. You won't want to go to the strip club. You won't want to sit there and party. You won't want to watch porn. You won't want to listen to the music Eminem. Fetty Wap, who claims that he's a devil worshiper and you're listening to this crap. Seriously? And you claim to be a follower of Christ? You've got to be out of your mind. You've got to be like Nebuchadnezzar and set, set crazy by the Lord until you get right. People, get right or get left and stop it. I'm tired of seeing it. And if y'all don't like it, and y'all are friends with me on Facebook, unfriend me, please. Because I'm tired of seeing y'all defend the sin. I'm tired of seeing y'all defend the abomination of homosexuality. I'm tired of seeing y'all think that God's going to change with the times. God does not change. 
The Bible says he does not change. He doesn't grow tolerant. Y'all have grown tolerant. Y'all have grown tolerant of the crap that goes on in the world. Y'all have grown tolerant of the sin in the world. Y'all have grown tolerant of brothers and sisters living in this manner. You need to stop and you need to call it out because the Bible commands you to call it out. The Bible commands you to judge righteously and judge against the word. We're, we don't. We cannot judge the world. We cannot do that. We leave that up to God. But the Bible commands us to judge righteously and judge those in the church, in the body, who are sinning. And the Bible also says to go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. I'm not going to say I don't sin. I'm not going to say I don't. Because I fall short. But I am not a sinner. I am not a sinner. Bible says that, that Christ will stop us from stumbling, will help us from stumbling. The Holy Spirit, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He convicts and he tells you when you're doing wrong. But if you're doing wrong and you don't think you're doing wrong, you need to check yourself on if you have the Holy Spirit or not or if you're truly saved. Because someone who is truly saved won't want to do those things anymore. They won't have nothing to do with them. You know, and I want to... I want to give a testimony about somebody very close to me who was just saved. And I was talking with this person and I was telling this person that they can't do that lifestyle anymore. That they have got to turn away from it. And they have got to ask Christ to help lead them through. You got to ask the Holy Spirit to lead you away from it. And when you have those thoughts of that lifestyle, when you have those thoughts of doing what you want to do that you know is against the word. And you have those thoughts of, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that. That's the Holy Spirit. You know, and you know those old cartoons where you had the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder? The angel is kind of like the Holy Spirit. Tells you, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. That's not what God wants. That's not in the Bible. But then you have this one saying, oh, it's okay. You're saved by grace through faith. You could do what you want and ask for forgiveness later. No, that's not how it works. Y'all need to stop using the Bible as a crutch. Y'all need to stop using the Bible as a reason to sin and as a reason to live your lifestyle. Because if y'all don't read the entire word and you pick and choose what you want to do and you pick and choose this scripture and that scripture and leave that one in there and leave that one in there because you don't like it because it convicts you, then you need to check yourself. Because if you're getting that conviction, that's the Holy Spirit and that's God telling you something. Get into your word and read what you should and should not be doing. I'm not talking about Old Testament, even though I believe that the Old Testament applies today because about 80% of it hasn't even been fulfilled yet. Oh yeah, the word fulfilled does not mean abolish either, people. Just say it. The whole word applies. The whole word. The entire thing. From in the beginning all the way into Revelation. It's Revelation, not Revelations. Y'all need to get into this word and see what God is saying. And stop using it as a crutch for your sin and a reason to live in your lifestyle that you live in. Come out of her, says the Lord. Come out of the world, because if you are in the world, you are an enemy of God. James 4.4 4 calls you adulterers, spiritual adulterers. James 4.4 4 even goes on to say that, don't you know that and, uh, friends with the world makes you an enemy of God? It says it right here. James 4, chapter 4, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but from the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Ooh, I want that. Ooh, I want that. Ooh, I'm going to get it. Because it's mine and I want it. We are not supposed to be like the world. The movies we watch. The music we listen to. Living together before marriage. That's called fornication. And believe it or not, I was a part of that too. But now with this marriage, <laughs> I was so blessed to be able to do it the biblical way. How honoring is it to God that when you do the things that God wants you to do, it honors him. 
it glorifies him and it shows that you want to be what he wants you to be. He wants that you want to live like his word. You think that God is accepting of your lifestyle? You think that God is tolerant? No. You think that God's tolerant, so you're tolerant. No, we are not to be tolerant with the world. We are not to be tolerant with the lifestyles that our brothers and sisters in Christ are living. We can't be tolerant. How are you supposed to be tolerant? That's not saving them. That's damning them to hell. That is allowing them to go to hell. How can you allow that? That is not love. That is acceptance. Being a loving brother and sister is calling your brothers and sisters out on going against the word of God and using it as a crutch. Please stop it. The Bible, you are going against the Bible. You are going against the word by accepting this stuff and saying it's okay because God will forgive you. You know what? It's one thing to be in sin, but it's another thing to become that sin. And only Christ can save you from it. Your, your pastor can't save you from it. Your friends can't save you from it. Only Christ can save you from it. If you know that the lifestyle you're living is wrong and you're using the Bible as an excuse to do it, check yourself and get on your face and ask God to help you. Ask Christ to wash you in his blood for salvation and redemption from that. The only true God in heaven and the only one that can help you is Christ. Cry out to him. Have him help you with that lifestyle that you don't want to live anymore. You feel it right here that I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. But I don't know how. Christ is how. The Bible is how. Get into your word. Do your research on your lifestyle. Do your research on what the Bible says about the world and how we're supposed to be set apart from it and sanctified unto God and away from the world. The world is supposed to be a stench to you. When you walk by that bar thinking about going and getting drunk, it should be a stench to you. You should not want to do that stuff anymore. You should want to do what God tells you to do. Do, excuse me. Christ says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Christ did not teach against the law. Christ did not teach against what his father teaches. Because then he wouldn't be Christ. What is wrong with you people? Get over your selfish desires and your selfish ways already. And stop defending your sin. When will you defend the Bible and stop using the Bible as a way to defend your lifestyle and your sin? Think about it, people. Really think about it and pray about it. Because I'm tired of seeing it. I really am. This is like, now I know how Jesus felt with the righteous anger that he had. It's just like, oh, how much longer must I deal with you people? You all say Jesus never got mad? Look at the punctuation. The little exclamation points. Oh, it's not like he said, oh, how much longer must I deal with you people? It's more like, oh, how much longer must I deal with you people? Seriously. Or when he made the whip and he flipped over the table. It's not like he made the whip nicely and he went over and he just like put the table over. No, he made the whip and he cracked and he threw the tables over. Because he was angry. Because they turned his father's house into a house of these Instead of a house of prayer. It's called righteous anger. And it's, I feel it welling up in me when I see my brothers and sisters defending their sin and using the Bible to defend it. And pick cherry picking what they want and what verses they want to defend their sin. Knock it off. I'm tired of hearing it. And if you don't like it, unfriend me, unfollow me, unlike this video, I don't care. Because I'm not here to caress you. I'm not here to say, it's okay. God will forgive you. Just keep living in your sin and just keep asking for forgiveness for your sin because God will forgive you. No, I'm here to tell you to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near because that's what Jesus taught and that's what I'm teaching. And you know what? This is in conjunction with the Revolt Podcast and with Freedom in Christ Ministries. Okay? Check it out. Like, subscribe, and share. If you feel like you 
know that this is right and this is truth being taught. Share this to everybody you know. Share this to those people who are defending their sin and using the Bible to defend their sin. Where is the conviction? Where is the true biblical teaching of this stuff? Where is it? It's right here on the Warrior Princess for the Most High. Please check in again. Thank you.